Uh, my question is, uh, given the post postmaster scandal, um, is there one law for the rich and one law for the poor in this country? Just explain your logic there. Well, if you look at the scene between Mr Bates and the lawyer that actually came along at the best time and took an interest in the case, in his discussions with Mr Bates, he said you'll have to find 500 people in order to get investors to invest so that you're, you'll get the money to actually do the case. You can imagine if they hadn't got 500 people, where would we be now? And the, the only way to get justice seems to be you've got more money than the next person. I mean, uh, I've, I've known two cases personally myself, who, who uh, family involvement, where uh, uh, they had a good case, but the firm they were dealing with had, a, had l long pockets and they just kept them in court until they had to give mm. up. Okay. I mean, you can look at it that way or you can look at it, well, this was the little guy actually triumphing in the end. It's taken a long time, but triumphing over the big corporate institution. Ollie Dugmore. Uh, I'm really glad Ben's asked this question because I think this scandal is incredibly instructive about power um, and our, the organisation of our society. Um, so, yes, you can say that the little guy sort of got one back, but where's the compensation? Uh, Venels has decided very, very graciously to give back her CBE today. But there's still 736 people who face prosecution as a result of that. I would say you don't have to be a manual Kant to figure out that those two things are a little bit unbalanced. Um, similarly, you know, go to, I don't know, Piper Alpha in 1988, the oil rig explosion, right? More than 160 people killed. No one went to prison over that. The invasion of Iraq. I'm still waiting to see what the uh, justice will be from, from that decision that made by then Prime Minister Tony Blair. Um, Grenfell Tower, who's in prison. There's one rule in this country for those who are in power and another for those who don't have it. And I think this scandal is deeply instructive about the organisation of our society, who has power and who doesn't. Emma? I, I believe Darren's a lawyer, so I'm going to tread very carefully when I say this. Um, I can comment from um, a corporate perspective and having started a business which now has size and scale, but you know, when I started I didn't have any money and I, I don't come from money. In the, world of, in the world of corporates and starting a business and small, small people fighting the big people, you know, I had a very negative, nasty experience as a young entrepreneur and I found myself up against people that had extraordinarily deep pockets who did what I now understand is what you would do in that scenario if you want to behave in the way that they did, which is it just dragged it out for months and scared the hell out of me. Now I'm far more equipped to understand how to deal with things like that. I've got people to call. I know lawyers. I know what's right and wrong. But when I was sort of 28, 29 years old, I just didn't have, uh, I just didn't have that ability. I didn't have that know-how and I didn't have that experience. Um, you know, I remember things uh, over the last few years where I've had to go through civil court if I want to go to criminal court, which is something I just really can't do. So I certainly think... Um, I I never like to criticise institutions unless I've got a better way to fix it, and I like to think I have to have a better way to fix it. I don't hear, um, but in the context of whether it's the post office or whether it's the world that I operate in of um, you know corporate behaviour, I do think you know you get a phenomenal lawyer and team behind you as, as who can also provide a buffer to the stress and shock of all of this, which I think is really important. I do definitely believe it's inequitable, um, and I was extremely upset when I saw that program. I mean, we talk about that there is justice for the little guy, but I mean you know there was a a man that committed suicide. There are people whose lives have been oh, destroyed. Four. Four. I've only, well, I've only watched half, you know, and, and there are people who lost their homes. A lovely family who spent a year living in a van after being repossessed with uh, no food and, and having spent their life savings. It doesn't, that doesn't feel even loosely fair. So I entirely agree with you, Ollie. Mims. Well, the post office should have had the biggest reach into community and understanding what it means to be the little guy who's a huge person in the community and I, that is what I think is quite remarkable about this deeply awful sorry tale which has wreaked so much devastation as, as Emma's rightly described and um, what and 
in terms of MPs, and it was great to see James O'Buffner and other people, where we do stand up for the little guy. That's what we do week in, week out as MPs, where the process isn't right, where people's voices are being drowned out. It's the best bit of the job, listening and hearing and engaging with your community and trying to uh, see a way through and change things for them. Um, and, I, and I was reflecting watching this because when I first came uh, into sort of really front line politics James is someone I knocked on doors with and I got to know and he's a very um, very lovely man. explain for those of you man. who've watched the series he was the Tory MP that um, Joe uh, the sub went in to. In Hampshire went to yes. Uh, and he then went round his colleagues and said have you got this in your constituency and then started asking questions. Because Darren office. will know that this, uh, it, this would be impossible to pick people off in the way that that big organisation. We don't know the details. That's why there is a judge-led inquiry. We've got to get to the bottom of, of all of this. And rushing to assumption based on the TV programme isn't right too. We've got to absolutely exercise our anger and, and go through the process where everybody understands how on earth these people were picked off in, in the way that Emma describes, which is absolutely heartbreaking. I watched it all in one go over the weekend you know, and, and you know, crying my heart out at the end like many people. Um, but the point about, um, you know, the little guy having opportunities, that's why there's pro bono work, that's why there's the parliamentary ombudsman, that's why you should be able to come to ministers and they should be there to listen and engage with they you. They weren't. That's the problem. I mean, certainly... I mean, look, this has been going on since 2000, so it's not a party political point here, but the, the period that the drama covered was predominantly the coalition years where the Liberal Democrats were uh, the, the, the held the post of post office minister. But people still question, well, why was nothing done before that mm. in the Blair and Brown governments? Why, why has it taken so long since 2015 for the various Conservative administrations to really get to... And there's a catalogue, apparently, of very able people who didn't, but uh, my colleague, Paul Scully, got hold... Who was sitting there last yeah, night. Yeah, got hold of J James Orbathnot's phone number, stepped in alongside Kevin Hollingrake, who from day one was campaigning on this when he He's came in with me in 2015. Absolutely, and cut through that. And I will say as, as a government minister who served in various different roles, my job sitting in Whitehall is always to listen for the little guy, always to ask the questions, never to send letters that say, you know, no one wants to talk to you. I want to make sure my official I engage. We do this at, at DWP, whether it's um, listening to our work coaches, listening to our employers, getting onto the ground of the people that operate for us and never take people's word from it. And if that's the key okay. thing that we do from this, this means the little guy will be heard, lawyered or not. Darren? It's one of my core beliefs that if so someone... You are a lawyer, aren't you? Uh, I was. Oh, uh, my uh, practicing certificate has uh, suspended because I couldn't log back into the system on time. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's, it's one of my core beliefs that if someone has power over another person, they must be subject to effective checks and balances. It's a core principle of freedom in our democracy. It's why I was proud to be a lawyer, a Labour MP, a trade unionist, and why I really enjoyed chairing the Select Committee, because those were checks and balance roles to make sure that where someone has power over somebody else, if they abuse that power, the kind of system ensures that there isn't a little guy with no money not able to get lawyers to be able to get the information or the justice they need. And the problem here, there's a whole host of issues around the post office inquiry um, uh, that will be considered, and there's a whole load of lessons that need to be uh, learnt. But the fundamental failure was a human failure. Yes, the technology didn't work, but people at the post office knew that and still acted in the way that they did. Do you know, there, there was a corporate failure as well, which has just occurred to me, that mm. the role of a non-executive director... Exactly right. ..is to really make sure that the executives in the organisation are doing what they should do. Absolutely. And I don't know who the non-executive directors of the post office were in this period, but they surely have got questions to answer here because they didn't fulfil the role that they were there to fulfil. Mm. And one of them is a government appointment because the government owns the post office. So UK government investments appoints an official to be a non-executive director on the post office. And through all of those years, the government was there around the table. 
all of those years. All different governments. Well, the official was the official. It wasn't a politician, it was the official. And I'm sure there were different officials during that period of time, but there was not effective challenge. There was not effective oversight. The governance didn't work. Information was hidden, which is why the court case was the only time when we knew, were clear about the facts that the post office knew the IT system was broken because of the legal claim that was brought by the 555 and Alan Bates. If that hadn't have happened, we might not even know that this was a problem today. Uh, so it was a human failure and it was a failure of checks and balances over power. We've got to be able to fix that in a democracy. And, and also the question remains as to who on earth recommended Paula Van Els for a CBE when clearly oh. by 2019, people... I mean, people knew that there was a problem and that she she was at the top of the tree and yet she was given a CBE. Now, there must be records somewhere as to who proposed Yeah, because that. people have to. You so know, I, think, I think we'd quite like to find out It makes who, a mockery of the honours system. It really does. I mean, look, I, I do think the whole honours system is an interesting one. Uh, I've recently come to learn that there are people that pay uh, agencies to do enormous pieces of work because I've been approached to, to, to write letters to get people appointed. So it's not quite sort of the earth as I thought, although there are lots of people that have them as a grassroots, from a grassroots perspective. But you, I mean, you have an honour, don't you? I, I do. I didn't want to mention it. It's a little. Who nominated you then? Did you find out? <laughs> Probably my dad. Uh, no, I, I do know who it was. I, I, um, it was a suggestion from a collection of political people that at the time I didn't even know they knew who I were, was. But I, I did something when I was 29, which um, purportedly did the UK proud. And I can honestly say it's amazing for hotel upgrades at my grandma's <laughs> care home for suggesting that I was important. Um, and my parents and I got to park in Buckingham Palace, so that was a real moment. Um, but it, it does somewhat make a mo mockery, right? We know there are government appointments. We know that some people get special treatment. We know that if you do a fantastic submission, clearly it gets lots of attention. But I, I find that inexcusable.